So today I want to show a, a few different examples and talk about a common problem I'm seeing with you know, many students across a few different classes. It's definitely coming to my attention that it's a consistent issue of, among less experienced painters. And it definitely has to do with value. So value, we're, we're talking just about how dark or light a surface or an object is. It has really nothing to do with color. And so here we have a few different assignments here. There's, uh, you know, they're, they're all houses more or less, but it, it, this can pertain to literally anything. A rock, a cliff, a mountain, a character even. But uh, look at these for a second and see if on your own you can come up with the solution. You know, pause the video if necessary. What the problem or the fundamental problem with these values are. And I'm not really talking about the structure of the uh, composition as a whole. So go on, take a moment, try to uh, take things in and uh, guess what the uh, problem is with the, uh, the value planning here. All right, assuming you did that or don't give a squat, let's go over this. So these are kind of painted all with the same problem. And I wanted to show a few examples that have the same problem. And that basically is that the local color, or in this case, the local value, of every surface, tone, object, and you know, every element in this scene is basically that same local color. That would basically be like if we had a black and white uh, photo of an image and it just completely washed white. The local color is really easy to explain and observe you know, within an object. It's something when you have a scene that's very overcast and it's not affected by shadow or direct sunlight or direct light in general so it's like the pure color of something when it's not affected by anything else and of course when you take the color away you're left with just the value so everything has you know that uh, genuine value that it innately is the roof has a value the the timber has a value the the panels and the the siding have a value the stone and the grass all have values but here the, these are more or less all painted with that if the the sky, the house, the roof, they all have that same relative value in place. And that's why it looks so flat as a result. Yes, the shadows are pointed in. Yes, we have highlights and shadow areas. You same with all of these, but it still looks genuinely flat based off, you know, that mindset. So let's look at this in, in practice now. What would a cube look like under this circumstance? with one solid local color. It would look like this, right? And that's fine, and that's why we observe cubes or we set up still lifes with blocks, and we can see the whole scene and it would look like this. It's because it has that same you know, local value. It's basically like if you were taking a 3D render of a scene, not applying a material to everything, and it would look, you know, it would look the same way as I'm describing. Here's an example of just that a complete 3d model but every material in it it has that same local value there's no brass there's no copper there's no steel there's no wood it's all the same so of course these houses and or these buildings you know under these circumstances this is basically the equivalent of what they would look like without any design elements and or detail so you can begin to see where where this problem is stemming from with a lot of uh you know, beginner artists. It's just, we know, you know, that we think, oh yeah, the, the light's up ahead or above, right? So anything on the surface is obviously getting lit. And then we have like, you know, just some general side or, or that ambient, um, you know, shadow. And then of course, more or less a direct shadow in, in this case, just to clearly convey the forms. Let's look at a few other examples to hopefully uh, explain this a bit more thoroughly. So here we have a house, right? Just a, you know, it's a little different than the half timber houses we just looked at, but uh, you know, this is a nice, fancy 3D render, but it's it's pretty accurate in what it's trying to express. So now, if we take this one side, and we'll, of course we'll desaturate this, uh, you know, for the simplification of this demonstration. See, so if we just take this side and we break down the value structure, this is where it's really easy to see that basically every separate uh, material, right, has its own local value has its base value that it starts. And by comparison, every value that, or when you, you see that when the form changes, every value uh, or material has its light, uh, direct sunlight and shadow counterpart. So there's two versions for every 
every value. So this is again look what it looks like kind of by default. Uh, and if we, again, if we were to just make a quick little shadow version of each, and I think that's easy enough to do, just going to levels and I'll just make that a little bit darker. See, that would be the difference. Like, see, this is in light, uh, light, and then this is in shadow. There's not some drastic change where the contrast is like night and day. It's just that every version has its own. And then, of course, if you wanted to do occluded light, you know, something like if this was uh, right, right here, right, this part sticks out. All right, so see, this has an overhang over the window. So if we really wanted to get some dark, but I mean, that's as complicated as a value structure really needs to get for most cases. And again, let's look at another example. And I think part of the problem that a lot of you know student artists uh, struggle with. So see, here we have a very basic still life, right? This is something a lot of you know academically um, students will tackle at art schools, and very common. And if you look, every value. Um, every material or every surface kind of has its own uh, local value color. See, these are coming from here, coming from here. And again, I think the problem with this is that these are all too similar. What would make this a much better uh, painting or, or still life is to kind of really express these difference in materials and surfaces. So this is a, like the lightest side object in the scene, right? This is like a light cup. This should really look like like this rather than this shade it should be actually a lot closer to this which is again hard to see against this light background but that should be the the shadow and the, the core shadow or the shadow of it should kind of be somewhere like in that range this is just for the side of it that's like way too dark in here then now that that's the occluded shadow this is the occluded shadow down here that would be a lot more reasonable for this likewise with the with the apple here the apple should be a lot darker than this by default maybe even start you know at this value and then of course if you did a highlight on it right you could look like that and then of course the shadow could look like that so the, here's like the value range for this object and of course to make things really different you know have this be the overall darker you know the darkest object maybe in the scene a nice dark bottle so that should look like that and then you know just have a different uh, surface value you know for the um, the ground, which, you know, this is fine. So you basically have a dark, you have a light, you have a medium, and uh, a dark medium. And I think structuring the scene like so would have made this like a lot more visually interesting. But we just have this habit at the beginning, we look at what's in light and what's in shadow only, and we just, we go um, a little overboard with the contrast of them. Let's just take a step back to our house. So let's, let's for example, this roof can be this dark. It's that core like so, or if we want to show this part, right? If we wanted to do a nice uh, foundation on the house, kind of like a lot of these timber ones have, right? Where there's a bit of a, a stone foundation. A lot of houses have them to prevent the rot. To kind of show that nice subtle value change throughout. And if you wanted to go the half timber route and show you know, some dark wood for, you know, exterior framing on things, we could do that one, one step up too. And light, shadow, light, shadow, and uh, you know, shadow version of it. So every material has its own, you know, value to start with. See so if we wanted to, you know, can make this look a little more believable. The the local value on grass is typically a lot darker. Then I have like the shadow version, right? Because the light's coming from the left. that way and then we have a cast shadow on the house but it, that's as you know, simple as we can break things down we don't need to get any more complicated about the value structure than that and yeah there are always exceptions here's one of them right the more intense the lighting the more intense the shadow is going to be hence this example and to contrast that here's some studio lighting where where the lighting is extremely diffused and soft so you don't get that really hard uh, shadow or that that contrast in the the light and the dark. There's a lot of circumstances for each and every one of these. I would recommend just try to understand and break down your materials to figure out how their value relationships are from one another and you'll be alright.
Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Sauce community. Free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. Plus. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.